how tiny movement and exercise grow your brain, strengthen your body, your cells, your mind, affecting things like learning, mood, perception, arousal, behavior, kids growing up, and the terrible effects of sitting. I'm talking science in this video, and I'm gonna bring it home for you. I'm gonna be geeking about stuff like neurotransmitters, glutamate, GABA, serotonin, dopamine, and a slow of others. I'm gonna talk about psychology a bit, what the drugs try to do, and how to improve your mental health without drugs, just by moving. Again, important disclaimer here, never stop taking medications without consulting your medical doctor first. Fair enough? But please feel free to share this video with him or her. Hint, it's all about the brain. It's the messenger, the brain. It's all about communication. Our brain is made up of a hundred billion neurons of various types that chat with one another by way of hundreds of different chemicals. They govern our every thought and even our action. Each brain cell might receive input from a hundred thousand others before firing off its own signal. But how does the science actually explain this? The junction between each cell branches is called the synapse, and this is where the rubber meets the road. Now, think of electrical wires. Synapses don't actually touch, you know, which is a little confusing because neuroscientists, well, they talk about synapses wiring together, like wiring two electrical wires together when they establish a connection. But that's not quite how it works. So understanding the science is vital to understanding how your brain works and how a chiropractic adjustment affects this. So the way it works is that an electrical signal shoots down one of the wires called the axon or the outgoing branch until it reaches a small gapping area between the second wire they call the dendrite. This area between these wires is called the synapse. Now, you can't see this in my example here. It would be the airspace in between each wire. Now, air is made up of certain properties. Five gases in the earth, nitrogen, oxygen, vapor, water, argon, carbon dioxide. But in my example, we're talking about neurology. I want you to see this synapse, this spatial air, this airspace here in my demonstration. So in neurology, of course, it's made up of chemicals. It's where a neurotransmitter carries the message from one wire to another wire across the synaptic gap in chemical form. Remember, neuro means nerve, and a transmitter, well, it does what the name implies. In electronics, a transmitter produces waves with an antenna, and the receiver picks up those waves around you where you hear music. See, these waves have specific channels, 97.1, or frequencies, AM or FM radio. You, know, you dial into this on your tuner on your car radio. Now, on the other side of that electrical wire, remember, we call it the dendrite or the receiving branch. The neurotransmitters or that wave signal plugs into a receptor like a lock and a key. And this opens what they call ion channels or little tunnels with gates whose job is to regulate the flow into the cell membrane to turn the signal into electricity. Now, the big secret in understanding chiropractic's role in all of this is what I call tiny movement. The tiny movements we make transform that mechanical energy into an electrical charge like that of a windmill. See, if the electrical charge at the receiving neuron builds up beyond a certain threshold, that nerve cell fires that signal along its own axon, and the entire process repeats itself. And we have, well, My light burnt out, but we should have electricity. And yes, exercise, especially that intense exercise needs to be included in your movement regimen. But intense exercises increase levels of two common neurotransmitters, glutamate and GABA. And they're responsible for the chemical messaging within the brain. You know, we know that 80% of the signaling in the brain is carried out by these two neurotransmitters that balance each other's effect. Glutamate stirs up activity to begin the signaling cascade, and GABA, well, it clamps down on that activity. So when 
Glutamate delivers a signal between two neurons that haven't spoken before. The activity primes the pump, and the more often the connection is activated, the stronger that attraction becomes, which is what neuroscientists mean when they talk about binding. As the saying goes, neurons that fire together, wire together. which makes glutamate a crucial ingredient in learning. Glutamate, also known as glutamic acid, is taken up by the body in order to build these proteins. Glutamate is the most abundant stimulating neurotransmitter in the nervous system. It's naturally made by the body when we move, especially intense exercise. Yes, it's also found in food sources and in supplements, but there is no strong evidence that suggests you can supplement your movement deficiencies by staying sluggish and sedentary and expect to take a glutamate supplement to counteract your sedentary sluggishness. That's crazy talk. And we often fall prey to that talk because we, most of us, you know, we want to lounge around all day and eat. And the body doesn't work like that. Glutamate is a workhorse, but the bulk of that research is psychiatry focused. This is why tiny movement and exercise has become an important part of treating depression and other neuropsychiatric disorders linked with deficiencies in neurotransmitters that drive the communication in between the brain cells that regulate physical and emotional health. So these neurotransmitters, they act as regulators of that signaling process and of everything else the brain does. There's serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. All three are impacted following a chiropractic adjustment because of the balancing effect to that parasympathetic nervous system or the relaxing and calming system chiropractic has on the body's stress response. And although neurons that produce them account for only 1% of the brain's 100 billion cells, these neurotransmitters wield powerful influence. They might instruct a neuron to make more glutamate, or they might make the neuron more efficient or alter the sensitivity of its receptors. They can override each other's signals coming into that synapse, lowering the noise in the brain. Trying to tune in clear sound, no static in the reception, or conversely amplify both signals turning up the volume to the radio, yeah, playing communication breakdown by Led Zeppelin, right? They can deliver signals directly like glutamate and GABA, but their primary role is in the adjusting of that flow of information in order to fine tune the overall balance of neurochemicals. And don't worry, think back to your good old FM radio, you know, you're trying to tune in the best connection and remove anything that disrupts that signal. That's all I'm saying. But I gotta talk some science chatter so you get this chiropractic stuff that it's truly a science. Serotonin, which you'll hear me talk a lot about in my office, it's often called the policeman of the brain because it helps keep brain activity under control. It influences mood, impulsiveness, anger, and aggressiveness. You know, medical doctors cover up the problem with use of serotonin drugs, such as Prozac, for example, because they think that this mind-altering drug will help modify runaway brain activity. It can lead to things like depression, anxiety, and obsessive compulsiveness. Even though the literature is clear that daily tiny movement and exercise has a better predictive effect in the brain and natural effect in the brain without the dangerous side effects from synthetic drugs and chemicals that never compensate for the real problem. You're not moving nearly as much as our ancestors moved which is eight to 10 miles of that all day movement. And it gets picked up like a motion detection system from your body, especially the motion of your spine. And it transforms that motion into electricity by way of the central nervous system, which includes stimulation of the brain, the spinal cord, and the 33 pairs of spinal nerves that branch off between every spinal joint in your body. Norepinephrine which was the first neurotransmitter scientists ever studied to understand mood and often amplify signals that influence intention, perception, motivation, 
and arousal. Dopamine, right? Which is thought of as a learning, reward, satisfaction, attention, and movement transmitter. Well, it takes on sometimes contradictory roles in different parts of the brain. Again, because our culture suffers from too much sitting, it's now a disease and the leading cause of early death. Instead of you telling you to move more, instead of moving every 30 minutes for three minutes and take care of your spinal health, because it's the windmill, the power generator to your brain and body function. Instead of teaching these truths, maybe because doctors don't believe you will move more, so they don't bother to tell you. Maybe they just gave, you, gave up on lifestyle and exercise intervention, or simply don't know about tiny movement's role and how exercise is a small part of the movement. That tiny movement transcends and includes exercise, and for the most part, it's free. So for this shot, I was going to grab some pills, but we don't have any. <laughs> so instead of you telling you to move you more, medical doctors, they prescribe these dangerous methylphenolate, Ritalin, right? The ease the attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD, by raising dopamine. They think this calms the mind, but in truth, it taxes your brain health and has even shown long-term use of these drugs leads to things like suicide and cancer, even growing brain tumors. The military, they can't accept you if you use these drugs in your medical history because of the postal effect they have in some people in the mass shootings. Did you even know that? You know, most of the drugs we use to improve mental health, well, they target one or more of these three neurotransmitters, but as I hope to make abundantly clear, simply raising or lowering the level of a neurotransmitter, it doesn't elicit a crisp one-to-one -one result because the system is so complex. Manipulating just one neurotransmitter creates a ripple effect that takes different paths in different brains. I tell people that taking good care of your spine with a chiropractor, move off an all day long with tiny movement. And going for a run is like taking a little bit of Prozac and a little bit of Ritalin. Because like the drugs, exercise elevates these neurotransmitters. But it does in the way nature intended and without the consequences of synthetic man-made drugs. It's a handy metaphor to get the point across. But the deeper explanation is that exercise balances neurotransmitters. And it balances along the rest of the neurochemicals in the brain. And keeping your brain in balance can change your life. Does sitting really kill? You know, data from over 240,000 adults who participated in these two huge studies. Well, they started out symptom-free, and they were assessed for nearly 10 years. Sedentary behaviors, including watching TV for more than seven hours per day, as compared with less than one hour per day, were most strongly associated with mortality from all causes, as well as cardiovascular mortality specifically. Interestingly, moderate to vigorous physical activity did not help much. As I pointed out previously, and we'll explain further in this video, that we cannot counteract the damage that results from sitting all day by exercising for an hour. Dr. David Dunstaff from the Baker IDI Heart and Diabetes Institute, Melbourne, Australia, senior leader of a multi-institutional, multinational team, a study of over 200,000 Australians. He observed them for over three years and he monitored them with these certain activity devices, these smart devices. And during this period, around 5,000 of them died. 7% of the deaths were associated with prolonged sitting. Those who sat longer than 11 hours per day had a 40% increased risk of death compared to people who sat for less than 4 hours. Those who sat for 8 or more hours per day had a 15% increased risk of dying. Other risk factors such as age and smoking, it didn't influence the results. Right now, as you watch this, you're probably sitting down. The longer you sit, you shut down the movement to your spine. That windmill effect is barely functioning. The less nerve signal you have, the more disturbed your body becomes, though you may not notice it at first. Your body is probably counting the minutes till you move again because we're designed to move. Like Batman, 
We've got stunts that we got to do each and every single day. We're designed for that movement. If you took an x-ray of yourself, you'd find hundreds of bones, joints, ligaments, and muscles whose purpose is to help you move and do whatever you feel like doing, from plain standing up to playing some exotic sport to challenging yourself as an acrobat performer or a gymnastic event or a stuntman. Moving gets those neurotransmitters working. It switches on those synapses I talked about earlier, creating a neurological circuit that then talks to your heart. So that nerve signaling helps your blood to circulate. Yes, it can do this without your moving, but not for long and not very well. Your lymph glands and lymphatic system have no mechanoreception capabilities, whereas most cells have mechano or movement sensing functions just to tell the cell how to behave or die. It's so important for our immune defenses and for disposing of toxins, it would not drain without movement. Your skin, the largest organ in your body, is elastic and is designed to stretch with every move you make. And if you don't move, it will sag. If you don't move because you're sitting or lying in bed, which are the most common examples of not moving, your spine's disc, which support the body both when it's upright and when you bend and move around, it would collapse on each other. In just 30 minutes of immobility to your spine, your disc begins to form scar tissue adhesions, which leads to spinal decay. In only two weeks of you sitting around too much, irreversible scar tissue adhesions degenerate your spinal disc and it accelerates that spinal decay. That is, without a chiropractic doctor, because we specialize in this. A typical way of sitting is with a slump back and curved shoulders, right? And take a look at any teenager who's curved over a texting device on end, right? Hours and hours on end. Their spine depends on movement, good posture, and great alignment, smooth working parts and healthy joint play during development to grow strong and straight. It's no wonder why babies to adults need a family chiropractor. See, without a chiropractor, because of sedentary lifestyle, sitting too much, they may grow up permanently stooped in adulthood. I watch a group of women taking their walk every morning by my house. And much as I admire them for being out there walking, I can't help but observe that they are all stooped. They watch their feet. They're stooping. You know, it puts an uneven strain on muscles and ligaments and that stretch to accommodate their body's curved position. You know what's worse? One of them I know sees a chiropractor, but the chiropractor spends no time educating her. She sees him for back pain when she has back pain. There's no mention of why she has the pain, of what to do and how to stop, prevent, and reverse it. What's most frustrating? Nothing I can say or do will convince her that chiropractic is more than just her back pain. Because again, she sees a chiropractor. Let me be blunt. He may share the name, but that's not chiropractic. That's not what we do in our office. We want you to stay and get well for a lifetime. And I teach you how to do that exactly. It's sort of wonder that almost everyone suffers from back or neck pain at some point in their life. And recently I heard that a state physical therapist association, they found that 80% of their clients come in for neck and back pain problems. Often the chiropractic problem, by the way. You'll get better quicker with a fraction of the cost. You know, the rest come in for pain in the arms, legs, feet, and the hands. But if you don't move, pain will get you soon enough. You know, when you stoop forward, you don't fully expand your lungs. They may collapse from undue chest pressure when they have less space to expand when you breathe. Scar tissue adhesions shorten the soft tissues around that rib cage which is supposed to move with your spine that leads to things like costochondritis. All of this is a problem because less oxygen is circulating through your lungs to carry to other parts of your body. Around the skeleton are the muscles, the arteries and the veins, the soft tissue that become compressed by sitting. This compression may decrease blood supply to your limbs and may block nerves, which could cause you to feel numbness. The veins in your legs are also compressed leading to things like swelling, not only from stooping, but also depending on how you sit. 
by shutting off circulation to and from the legs at the hip and the knee junction. This is made worse if you're pregnant or if you have some extra abdominal fat. And did you know that this sluggish circulation in your legs and your lower body affects your brain as it becomes deprived of blood flow and oxygen just when you need it most when you sit down to work? So sitting will affect your concentration level as everything your blood flow brings to the brain, such as oxygen and glucose, falls. You know, prolonged sitting also affects your metabolism. It leads to inhibition of lipoprotein lipase, a special enzyme in the walls of capillaries that breaks down fats in the blood. When you sit, you don't burn fat nearly as well as when you move around. So something like the sitting that we do all the time has the power to change the level of our health. The solution is simple and intuitive. When you have no choice but to sit, try switching the slouch posture for a straighter spine. Better still, set a reminder to yourself to reverse these changes by standing up to regain power, especially with the help of a trained chiropractor that practices true blue chiropractic, meaning they actually care for and move your spine between each segment. Monitor your spinal health throughout your life. Just as a dentist monitors your teeth, mostly gain an appreciation that your bodies are built for motion, not stillness. In fact, treat your body now. Stand up and stretch. Shake around. Move your body, your back, your neck, your spine for three minutes. Your body and your health We'll thank you later. I'm Dr. Matt Hammett, reminding you to lighten up, move better, and live fuller. Until next time.